Basically, this is a response to a lot of things, including a video posted by one Philium uh, two days ago, who recorded, who decided to record himself scolding us like a high school gym teacher, saying that you're immature and you need to learn how to be men. Yeah. So, you know, there you go. And the, the main thing is, like, people want to, really want to know why we don't do anything with him anymore. And he himself, oddly, is saying that he's, he wants to know why, you know. But that video that he put out, I think, is a perfect example of why. <laughs> you know, so if you, if you really, like, examine it, it's a video he puts out on Thanksgiving Day, which I don't really understand. Um, and last year, Thanksgiving, he decided to unfollow me. Which well, yeah. some issues. So something with Thanksgiving. I don't know if he's eating something that doesn't agree with him. Maybe he needs to follow your turkey recipe. Yeah, it it really. I I think for me, it really started with that because not only did he unfollow, like he the way I noticed it was when I was on Twitter. He I looked at his people that he was following, and he unfollowed both of us. And yeah. there was there was no real really no rhyme or reason to it, which I I thought was I think that was the first shot. <laughs> I'll yeah, be honest with you. It's weird stuff. Like, yeah. Especially uh, when you work and, and you work hard and stuff, you, you look forward to certain days off. And, like, Thanksgiving is a certain day, like, with your family and whatnot. Um, and then, like, to, and to do these things on Thanksgiving, it sounds silly. It is just a day, but you're showing no concern, like, for the other person. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to cause shit. Like, suddenly you get inundated with messages, and people, you know, while you're trying to enjoy a day with your family. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, no, I, I, I understand completely. I just, uh, I'll, yeah, there's a lot of, there, there's going to be a lot of things talked about, you know, yeah. and uh, again, we're not here, and we just want to reiterate this, we are not here to defame anyone. This is just to let people know our side of the story because people have a tendency to just uh, view one thing and not look at it from another way, and trying to understand the other party's uh, view yeah, on it. And I'm not angry. Like I don't know about you. I'm yeah. not angry with the guy. Uh, we've said before publicly, like we wish him the best. Don't wish him any ill. You know, I hope he like makes a ton of cash and uh, has a great life, man. You know, yeah. Um, why Why would I not feel that way? What What is it? How does that affect me? Yeah, and yeah. and going back to what we were saying before, I don't we don't make mo- I don't make money off of this, and I don't know about you, John, but it's not something that bothers me. It's just something that I enjoy doing. Yeah, man. Until this point, which is a good, jeez, uh, been like been a long time. Until this point, we've not said anything against him because, like I said, I wish him the best. I don't want to hurt him, and saying anything negative about him, I feel could hurt his livelihood. And uh, the other thing is, there's a lot of history. There's a lot of good times, man. There's a lot of really good times. And uh, you kind of uh, you piss on a lot of that stuff by doing this. And, and I feel like things should be kept in-house amongst friends. You know, a circle of trust amongst friends, Howard. Do you believe in, in such things with people? No, I, I, I believe, I wholeheartedly believe in that. And that's yeah. why I'm a little ticked off about this because, you know... It, it's one of those things where, like, you know, you can't even trust him in terms of, like, sending a message, like yeah. a text message, because you don't know if that's going to get publicly put on, like, YouTube mm-hmm. or if he's going to make a video about it. Because it's something, you know, if I send you a message, I don't expect you to the next day or two days later or whatever make a, a you know, a, during your regular vlog sessions, you go ahead and, and you publicly read the message. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a great the, point because, yeah. like... What we're going to be doing today is kind of maybe revealing some things, and it's, I've kind of really held against doing that because it does make you in a sense a hypocrite to be doing the same thing that uh, has caused you pain or caused you you know to be pissed off. Um, but it gets to a point like enough is enough, man. At this point, it's really jumped the shark, and uh, things have got to be put out there, man. Sadly, yeah, yeah, um, and. The thing that the thing that's like it's another thing that's sad about it is no one listens to this kind of stuff, and then or listens to like him talk about us or us talk about him, and, and then goes, "Oh, these guys are fucking cool," you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's disgusting stuff. It's sad. 
it's not you're not creating content. It's freaking garbage content uh, for the bottom of the barrel, man. And, and that's what it is. But you get dragged into it, fortunately, you know. So, you know, getting back to his video, it's really full of what's, as I said, it's an example of the problem itself. You know, it's it's full of what's been a long history of him saying things publicly, out of turn, exaggerating things, and or saying just, just saying shit that's not uh, just not true. Yeah, <laughs> about me, about others, man. So, and uh, again, if people get pissed listening to this as a consolation prize if you really think about it if you're a fan of Phil's you have to agree that I did and I know you did to an extent everything you could to help him over the years you know and so much so so that to this day he makes money off of videos that we're in to this day every day yeah whether it's you know 10 cents whether it's 10 bucks whatever the hell it is he's making money off you know off of it Work we did for him every single day, and he's still finding new ways to, to monetize us, uh, based on that video and uh, other things that go on. Yeah, pretty much. You know. And then I, I think I, I really think that like, uh, it really it really it's really like a testament as to what what he held our friendships for, because it feel it's, it seems that the money was more important than us being his friend. Yeah, I mean that's how you feel. Yeah, that's how I feel. That, that's 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 how I feel because, you know, I, I don't know. There's like a whole bunch of things that we got to talk about, and I don't want to go ahead and and go out of turn. All right, but, I got I got you. Yeah. We'll try to keep this, uh, you know, keep this rolling here. Yeah. Um, in that video, uh, he says, "This is the Thanksgiving video I'm talking about." He says he talks about. He says they talked shit about me. I don't know if you caught that part. Yep. And I'm not exactly sure what that is in reference to. <laughs> now, there was a video I put out, Pay Me Tons, parody, right? Yep. And it's a parody, man. I've done parodies in the past. Just to give you a little idea, I've done parodies about Machinima. I did a, a YouTube parody where YouTube was a uh, a talking uh, vagina, a vagina robot that ran yep. YouTube. I've done GameStop. You know, et cetera, et cetera. It comes out, man. People get a little crazy about it. So, two weeks later, you know, you and I were on, uh, doing the show. And we explained it wasn't singling him out, you know. It was uh, it was about many, many things. And not necessarily in a hateful manner. Like, I think you can make fun of something. And uh, really not feel negatively about it at all, actually. Yeah. Like Saturday Night Live, you know, Phil Hartman would uh, dress as Bill Clinton. I don't think he wanted to assassinate the president, <laughs> right? Yep. It's, uh, it's having a good time with something. And that was really my, uh, what was it about, <clears throat> man? Now, was he like an inspiration for the character that I was portraying in that? To, yeah, sure, to an extent, you know? But again, not in a malicious, uh, hateful way. It's having some fun with something. Um, but it's not, again, it's, 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 I think it's hard to say it's directly about one person, right? Yeah, yeah. it was a whole thing. The whole thing was about that, the pay me or pay me Wow, Patreon, right. uh, uh, website, you know, and what people do and, you know, and, and then what it is too, it's, it's when you, when you look at it, it's, it's, it's to basically shed light on some of the negativity that, that revolves around that site and not only that site, but Kickstarter, Mm. Look at all the shenanigans that has has gone that has transpired in the past like few years, where people like raise up all this money, promise a a product, and then and then basically everyone's sol. They they took the money and people are fucked. Mm. You know, look at what happened with you know. Look at the disaster that uh, Inafune is going out with that uh, mighty number no. nine. That's still not out. Yeah, I, uh, I'm waiting for that one. Looking for you know, you know hopefully it comes soon. <clears throat> so people make promises and they don't, you know, go through with them. And that's basically what the parody was about, you know? Yeah. Because I mean, I hate, you know, I hate yeah. Patreon or I hate people that use it or something. No, I really, <laughs> honestly, if everyone on there, hope you like everyone gets a million dollars a month. Yeah. Like what it doesn't, again, it doesn't affect me in any way. Um, but again, my, my main thing was like looking around YouTube and, and seeing that no one has done a parody of this. Which is interesting. Is that because, you know, 
people want to have one and they don't want to make fun of it or something or you know or they we call the hypocrite if they have one or something so i felt like oh i could get away i could get away with making fun of this thing cuz uh, i'm not looking to really make money on this or really have the option <laughs> yeah so i put it out and the, and the, here's a little secret for you I, I don't really matter that much on youtube it's not a video that got a billion views or something or really can you really say it affected you in a negative way? And despite all that, we came out and said it wasn't directly about him. We wished him the very best, and uh, just said we we're not going to be part of his stuff. And uh, that was that. So I don't see how that's talking shit about. You know, we're talking shit about him. On top of that, after the Pay Me Tons video came out, he publicly said, "If John does a skit making fun of Patron." It doesn't mean he's talking shit about me. I'd like I'd like to know. Yeah. Where was the shit talk? It's like one of those things where you can just put, say something in a video and like, oh, they talk shit, but you have no examples of this. So people just kind of go, oh, they talk shit. They must they must have done it. Yeah, and and you know, it's just one of those things that people like. I feel bad because. He doesn't know how to uh, let go of things. I guess people like, you know, and this happens with anything. You know, people jam you with stuff on like Twitter and they prod you and prod you and prod you to try to get a response out of it. And he fell right into the shenanigans. Yeah, you know what? And we're falling into it right now because honestly, honestly, I think he's falling into it right now too because he, 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 he threw a shot and then... We're we didn't want to throw the shot, but now we have to throw the shot. Yeah, and it's it's weird. It's weird timing. Why why yeah. did you pick that day at that time? And the, the, you know, it's not like we did the show th- uh, Wednesday and we were like talking shit or or there's anything that has to do with them. It's like it's a it's a it's a vet, it's a attempted at trolling. Yep. It's uh, l- let me say something. Hopefully they'll respond. Then I could come back with something else. And I create a whole situation of drama around myself, you know. And uh, I think this is what he wanted us to do. This is why I haven't done this uh, ever until now. Despite him, you know, running me down on his forums, on Twitter, on, on his chat, you know. And, bought, like, tried to do stuff on the sneak. But I catch wind of all this stuff, man. People send me all this stuff. Yeah. And, and the most then- part, I don't, I don't look at it. But with things like this happen, I'll go through and see what's, what's going down. Um, you know, it's an attempt to, it's an attempt to get something going. Yeah. And he falls victim to it on a consistent basis. Yeah. And he doesn't, he has an issue, like a really big issue with damage control. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't know how to ignore things. Yeah. So this is why we're in the situation that we're in now is because of that. Yeah. You know, there was no need for him to make, to address this. He could have just let it go and that was it. Mm. But we'll me, talk. I don't know if you want three months. Add, three months after we last spoke about him, in a in a positive way that we spoke about him, let's choose just three months randomly and just say some stuff. And then not only that, every single time we've been out in the field and people have asked us about him, all we do is we don't associate with him anymore. But we wish him the best of luck. Yeah. Remember that guy that we met at the YouTube studios. Yeah, he yeah, asks yeah. It's the same question that we say. We always give the same answer. Yeah, man. We're not here to bash anybody, but at the same time, we're not here to take shit from anybody either. <laughs> yeah, there's enough. There's enough, and uh, we we always talk about it. You know, as I always say, hopefully we don't have to do this. Yeah, we talk about this on a sad. It's basis. disgusting. It's sad, but uh, here we are, man. So yeah, and again, I want to. I'm gonna like spill this out. This isn't an attack. This isn't like an, just an attack, like, this is all the shit that went down. There's things that are out there that he put out there, things other people believe, that are not true. Yeah. So, I have to defend myself, we have to dispel some things. So, I want to get into a couple things here, man. So, the first one I want to talk about, which is disgusting, man, is money, okay? You ever told, like, you shouldn't talk about money? You ever, you ever, oh, yeah, you ever all, tell the you all the time. All the time. This is not me complaining about money because, honestly, from my side of things, I know some other people 
uh, in our in our circle uh, don't agree. But uh, I believe I was treated fairly with with money. But the problem is, info that's been presented to you is not exactly true. So it's something that he says quite often. John got fifty percent. He got half of everything that I made that we made together, or videos I was in with him, right? And again, Howard, like, why is this something that's said publicly? This you, should have can you come up with been, any kind of a, there, a reason. There is there is um, there is no reason to say um, this unless he's a he's lying or b he's trying to save face. There is so, no there is no reason to even address anything about money publicly on a YouTube YouTube video. Yeah, and this is done way before there was any kind of pr- for yeah. before there was major problems. Just something that's thrown out like, oh look, I'm a great guy. I'm giving him half the money. Yeah, I get. Um, it's not exactly the truth. Okay, so. He starts doing YouTube stuff in 2008. I do, you know, I start doing videos with him. We've been hanging out for a couple years before that playing games. So just kind of transition into now we're going to be playing games, but recording games, you know. Um, and I did this stuff for from 2008 when he started YouTube. I did this for probably a couple years for nothing. He signs on with Machinima a few years later. And I had to come to him and ask because we're, we're still doing videos. And I said, since you're getting something for this, do you feel that I should get a percentage of that for my efforts on here, right? Mm-hmm. So we make an agreement, which will be basically half of the month, half of the month's co-op income. So what happens is he takes out taxes from that amount um, and cuts it in half, right? I get half of that. But... For instance, like if it's March and we do videos in March, I will get a percentage of what was made in March. That does not include residuals like for months coming up. Like for instance, if those videos make more money in April or or, or uh, June or July, okay, like that doesn't include that. So whatever was made in April for that month, that's what I would get. It does not include streams or whatever other money comes in, right? Yeah. This went on for a little while. And again, not exactly 50% if you throw it out there, but this goes on for a little while. Then he says to me, Machinima isn't sending me reports anymore, so I have no idea. I have no idea of the, the amount of money that we're making on the co-op. I have no way of figuring it out. So I can, I can no longer figure out this percentage that we agreed on. So I basically just go, okay, listen, Throw me $100 every time I come down. Okay? And the way I come to this number is because round trip is about two and a half hours of driving. Right? I'm there the entire day, and uh, I have to buy a meal at some point. So give me 100 bucks to kind of cover my expense. You also have to consider, you know, these are days like I'm, I'm not going to work. Because my job, and I'm, in, I'm an independent contractor. So I'm not going to work these days. So if you really do the math, uh, with gas and food and uh, wear and tear in your car, you know, $100 every time you come, you're not exactly pr- profiting there. <laughs> and, in, and including not going to, or working at a job which will actually make you more money than, than this, you know. Yep. So just to flat up say you got 50%, it's, uh, it's far from true. It's far from the truth there. <laughs> like, it's ha- I guess it's half-truth. It's a half-truth? Is that what you would say? Yeah, it's a half-truth. You know? Um, so when people want to throw their stuff out there, man, all like, you went to conventions and uh, you paid for things. Again, like, you go to conventions, you got to take time from work. Which is, I'm not getting paid for work. Um, and we went to conventions, and you know, he's got a, an injury. He says a back injury. So I would go and I would carry things. I would uh, film things. Uh, I did all the driving, as you, as you know, <laughs> uh, and I'd do whatever I could to help. I was, I was coming as, not, it's not just like, hey, Phil, take me on this trip, and I'll fuck around, and I'll sit by the pool. You know, I uh, you know, came as basically to assist him in his business, as he likes to call it, right? Mm-hmm. So again, it's not me... That wasn't me complaining about, like, I should have gotten this, I should have gotten that, or anything else. It's just, like, again, it, it gets out there. He got half of what's made. 
but there's many more details in there that uh, you know are not are not given. Let's get into this, man. I'll spend all day on this. Probably go eight hours on this topic. Try to keep it down as much as we can. But we got to touch on Project Seven because again, there's things said publicly that kind of need to be uh, you know addressed. So Project Seven, man, the version we were involved in. Tell us a little bit like how it started, Howard, man. Because these are your those are your guys, you know. The very well, beginnings of this thing. Well, basically, we got together and like. <clears throat> well, how do you know? How do you know Andre and Paul? Andre and Paul are childhood friends of mine. We grew up together. Yeah. And basically, Paul, as we got older, Paul ended up going to like a film school and Andre as well. So yeah. Andre went to a film school in California. Paul went to a film school in New York. And um, right around the time, like I had lost contact with, with them. And then like one day I ended up showing up to um, – I, I just – met them you know I, I go to church with them and everything else and i just showed up at the church and we we're talking or whatever and he uh they were you know we we're talking about youtube and stuff and you know i i made mention about you know that i started doing youtube stuff and uh you know talked about a little bit about you guys you and phil and you know they were interested so prior to me introducing you guys to them i did a couple of videos with them under uh uh i think it was was it respect the pact at the time or yeah, i think it was yeah. respect the pact yeah I, I remember, like, I remember this is how I remembered, okay? Yeah. I remember you came to me, and you go, I got these two guys, they're my friends. Yeah. You know, grew up together and whatnot. Um, they want to make some videos. Are you interested in doing anything with them? And then I go, you know, thinking about it, I go, let's bring Phil in on this. Yeah. Do you remember, do you remember that? Yeah, but it, I think when we, yeah, so, so when you we initially, to... You initially was like, let's do something with these guys, yeah. and I was like, Let's get you know, let's bring Phil in on it, my buddy, you know, uh, and then it was like, what are we gonna do? And it wound up being the Project Seven thing. Yeah, because that was like he did. Pro he started Project Seven one like two thousand and nine. It was uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think it was like a year before, and then we said, oh, let's you know, why don't we just reboot it? Yeah. So it was in a process of that, and you know, they were they were on board. Everybody was on board. We were having a great time, you know. Yeah, it was a, it was a great time, and honestly, like a it was like an experience. Um, not not necessarily the videos themselves, but the experience of doing it uh, was like a, a real big thing for me, man. Like I learned a lot from Andre and Paul, and I kind of got the bug to like, oh shit, I want to make like movies and, and and stuff like that, you know. Um, thanks to thanks to those guys, just seeing yep. what they were doing. Um, so it was a, it was a great experience in that end. Uh, there's a then it all kind of started to slowly erode away and yeah. fall apart, man. I'd say what really punched me in the face, man, is that's what it basically was. Right before episode three is going to come out, uh, you know, doing my thing. This is going to be a, a, a common theme on this on this recording here, where I'm just kind of doing my thing, doing what I got to do in my daily life, and I start getting messages from people. And I go, what the hell is this? <laughs> so, mm. before episode, right before episode three comes out, Phil puts out a video. He's talking about uh, Project Seven, whatever, man. And he basically, he's, it's just something he often says. He's just like, he'll like set it up. I don't mean to, I don't mean to badmouth. Don't take this the wrong way. But he says, I don't mean to badmouth John Rambo. Don't take this the wrong way. And proceeds to talk about me. Um. Talking about how John was given the best lines, and we gave him things to do, because basically he's upset that people were in the comments saying that, uh, oh John, you know John's the best part of this or, or things like that, you know. Um, so yeah, he makes the video saying he was, John was given things to do. He was given the best lines. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's a flat out lie. <laughs> yeah, a flat out lie. Uh, you know, he goes on to talk about, still referencing that, that same video, he talks about a scene that he came up with. He goes, he's like, there's a part of the trailer everyone loves with John. I came up with that. And it's interesting because, you know, the sentence before that, he's talking about how it's a group effort. Yeah, and then and he says that he, he came up with, with, the, with the lines or whatever. The next, which is, the next sentence is, I came up with that. Yeah, which is, which is nonsense. And, and, and like you said, going, going back to what you were saying, John, this is a common theme. Yeah. Because again, instead of addressing this, you know, between amongst ourselves, he yeah, goes addresses it. 
He addresses it publicly, which makes mm. it even worse. Yeah. He doesn't get, there's no call to me. There's no, yeah. no conversation. Like, uh, hey, uh, you know, people are saying this shit. Um, maybe you could say something or there's a way to, to say it differently. Or is this something, honestly, it's not something that even needs to be really addressed yeah. at all. Because it's yeah. basically people saying, I like this aspect of this show that you want me to watch. Yeah. Um, but he talks about a scene in the trailer that he came up with. I came up with that. It's basically the, the part where I'm shooting the gun like Rambo does. It's not exactly a genius idea. And, uh, you know, I think several people suggested it. Um, and when it was actually filmed, he, it's, not like he, he, it's not like he was directing the, the scene. He was actually not even in the room. Okay, it, it, it was, you know, it was something I did, <laughs> you know, to put it frank, you know. Um, he talks about a scene that, oh, the scene where, uh, he's like, there's a scene in this episode that a lot of people put together. John wasn't involved in it. Howard and OJ and some other people put it together. Of course, it was the, the great scene where you, uh, what was it, you shoot the gentleman and then you say, uh, you can wash your hands? Yeah. Okay. Um in, in all honesty, you know, it was put together by you, OJ, and me. <laughs> yeah. And Andre and Paul filmed it and directed it. So basically, everyone was involved in putting that together but him. Yeah. Uh, Phil. <laughs> but well, it's just it, it's just mind-boggling why, why he would do these things publicly. Yeah, it's one thing. I mean... Let's you know, say I, all of this is true, like he said. Let's say every word he said is true. Even then, it's fucked up to be saying this. To be saying this, yeah. But not only is it, not only are you saying it, but it's also a lie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Um, okay, let's, let's talk about this. So, on that specific episode, what did I do? Why did I deserve to be treated like that? Okay, I show up. I do the very best I can. I, I try very, very hard to do my best. I brought OJ into this. I brought Chap into this. Those are people that I went to high school with. I go back a long time. Chap is a professional actor. Uh, he played the gaseous uh, snake gentleman. I brought them in. Try my very best. And why does why is this why is this stuff said? Why does this happen? Right. So I'm pissed off, man. At this point, and. I think I talked to you first. I think I was ready to be done with the whole thing. Yeah, and I think that was that was one of the uh, uh, breaking points for the show yeah. to start ending. Was it was that, and it was it was that, and then and then after it slowly that, slowly eroded from thing. there. Eroded from there, and then the erosion was started getting substantially worse because he saw people say, "Oh, John's the best," at whatever, yeah. and that that made him so upset. Yeah, oh, I have now. I you know now I'm angry. And what's funny is I think people were trolling because I, and I think he'd made statements like in the past about it, like a little bit, but not to like this degree where he's like, you know, it pisses me off when you say that you shouldn't say John's the best or something. So people start doing it like out of spite, just to fuck with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. They might not even necessarily think that. They just let me just write this because I know it makes him upset, and then he, he he buys right into all that. Yeah. So at this point, I'm really I'm really pissed off. So I call him. I call him immediately, and I, I fucking have it out with him, dude. And I tell him everything I'm feeling about it, and I'm pissed off. So, to his credit, he apologizes profusely. Says to me that he's he felt insecure, or he's, he is insecure. He shouldn't have said it. He just got really frustrated um, with what they were saying, and he just couldn't take it anymore. And he had to say something, and he ex exploded. So he apologizes to me, and I accept it. Um, but he never actually says anything publicly. There's no public apology. There's no clarification about, you know, what he said, how, how it wasn't exactly the truth. Yep. And then what basically happens is there's people that are his fans and a lot of them uh, not very bright. <laughs> Let's be honest here. And uh, they start shitting on me. You know, they come at me and they shit on me because they think, oh, fucking, you know, that's what, that's what Phil wants me to do, right? Yeah, he wants me to do that. And again, what? Why did I deserve? Why did I deserve that? Yeah. yeah. So continue with Project Seven, man. So you said it started to fall apart at that point. What, what do you think happens? Where do you started your started to fall apart? And what was basically happening was 
These guys were working 50, 60 hours a week on getting this shit edited to try to pump it out with these unrealistic timelines. So naturally what's going to happen is people are just going to get uh, burnt out, mm. which, which ended up happening. Couple of that with the fact and, – and again, we don't want to say – we don't want to talk too much about it, but couple that with the fact with money. You know, yeah. These guys are putting all this time and effort into it, into this fucking thing, and what do they get? Gugats, that's what they got. Because yeah. when you think about it, right? You would think, oh, he, you know, because people are when when I say this, people are going to come back and say, well, you know, Phil promoted their channel and that's all they wanted. No, 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 no. Here's the here's the bottom line, right? You would think, out of the kindness of your heart, you would go ahead. Damn, man, these guys are putting all this time and effort in this thing. It's not the kindness. It's just what's fair is fair. What's fair is fair. Let me let me throw them a couple of bones. Whatever the case may be, throw them a couple, some money here and there, some some percentage of the profits, and this and that. So what is what ends up happening? John and I are talking about this, and John says, "I'm going to talk to him." So what does John say? John goes up to him and says, "Dude, you, you know, throw him some money, man. These guys, if you throw him some money, they'll continue. If not, they're going to stop." Yeah, and that's a great point because, like, anytime there is a yeah. problem, I always do address it right to his face. Yeah. So <laughs> which is not goes, which is not be, which is so not being said now. What does he say? He uh, has the audacity to say, "Oh, um, they didn't." I I told them or I asked them if they wanted money and they and they denied it. That's a fucking load of shit. Okay, so because I talked to them afterwards. Uh-huh. About it. All right, so. So it probably still was a lot of work for them. I don't think it was much work for us, uh, despite what Phil would talk about how hard the day was. No, it wasn't. It wasn't hard. It wasn't hard for us. It was hard for them. Yeah, I mean, it was one day, one day of filming. Um, yeah, maybe seven hours, and one day, just, and then you go just home to and you're give done. You, yeah, be, before you continue, John, just just to give you uh, guys an idea of how long it takes to do things. The the one of the scenes that we did in that part three was a bullet scene. Where, where we're firing bullets. They told me it took them four four to five hours to do that. Just that scene. And that scene was what, five seconds? Five yeah, seconds? Yeah, no, yeah. Trust me, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know about that. Uh, so it gets to a point where it's a lot of work for these guys. They feel like they're not getting anything back. Uh, and, and they're not getting credit. They're not getting, you know, monetized things. Nothing. Okay. Something happened. Andre had basically a big life changing thing. He's having a kid. Okay? Andre's going to have a kid. So they basically say, look, we can't, we're not, we can't do this anymore. We can't do the Project 7 anymore. It's just not, uh, it's not worth our time, man. We got other stuff we got to do. So I had a conversation, like Howard said, I had a conversation with Phil. I said, listen, you have to make it worth their while, man throw them money. And I'm not saying throw them like thousands of dollars. There's already been, at this point, there was already four episodes that had come out, right? Yeah. Because we did four four episodes that had come out. So I said, listen, just divvy up the money. There's five people in this. There's only five people, the crew and the whole the whole cast, okay? Yeah. The video's made a lot of money. If you if you uh, look at the views, the amount of views, he gets paid on views. It's like $2 for every thousand views that he gets. So... Simply, you know, figure out how much you made off all these videos. I know that Phil spent, Phil spent a lot of money on props and stuff, so subtract all the costs. That's fair, right? Subtract yeah. all your costs, then you have a number, and then split it the five ways and throw them the cash. Yep. And, and offer, you know, offer that to them. There's no guarantee that they're going to, you know, continue with the series, but hey, man, at least try. And it's, I think that's fair. His response... They don't want money. They don't want they they don't want any money after this, based yeah. on what he says. They told him that. Yeah, and then I asked them about it, and they said he didn't even he didn't even talk to them. And this is yeah, this no is what I mean. There's no over. conversation. Right. So and then this the so so what pe- what you guys what everyone has to realize is this is this is like a whole bunch of things that has happened in the past that just it just irritates people. Because yeah. now what ends up happening is, it's like, do you value money more than our friendship? Because if that's the case, then why am I even here? Right. 
you know. All right, so and, let me ask you, did you get anything out of the Project 7? First of all, let's – yeah, we're going to talk about that. Not, I didn't get shit out of Project 7. So no one got paid. Now, here's the thing. I got paid. John got paid. <laughs> I got my percentage. Yeah. There was a, there, at that time period, there was a point where my car had broken down and I needed to get – Actually, I bought, I bought. Yeah, I got a used car. I bought another car at that time. So I go, Phil. Listen, I'm not coming to your house because I can't. I have no car. Uh, if you want me to come, throw me my percentage from the Project Seven, and I'll use that cash towards a new, a new car. And so yep. I got my money. But there's, you know, three other people, you guys, that got zero. That got zero. Now, whatever. For my for my end, it's whatever. But this this is what burns me. Okay. We in the middle of this whole Project Seven thing, we all, you, myself, and Phil, came up with the idea. Let's make T-shirts, right? Yeah. So what do well, we? Hold do? on, let's hold on. Let's hit the brakes for one second because we're talking about money and we should have gotten money. Yeah, like you say, it's not about the money. It's like what's fair. It's what's fair. Yeah, like like you have a job, I got a job. Those guys, are, like no one's homeless here. No one's like uh, destitute, and we don't, we're we're or we're like, oh man, Project Seven. We need to make this to pay our bills. Or we need to make videos to pay our bills. It's nothing to do with that. Like, we don't necessarily need the money, okay? Um, and again, it's not millions of dollars here. It's just, it's whatever is fair. But, it's but. fair. It, because as friends, you, you would expect to be treated with respect. And, oh, you did you tried hard on this. But this is here, your cut. Here's the thing. It's just we're a team, as you said, and we all did it together. And, you know, it's not one person. Uh, it should be fair. It should be divvied up. To okay. add on to what you were saying. Yes. Okay. To add on to that, so what happens, right? We go ahead. He doesn't. We don't get our cut, which is whatever at this point. But we start showing up to your house, and what do we see? The guy starts buying figurines, starts buying all this ridiculous shit that there's no need to buy. He then we show up to his house one day, and what does he have in a fucking driveway? A BMW. So how the fuck do you think I feel, and how do you think these guys feel after the fact? Mm. Was there is that is there anything you know? Do you do you not understand how this burns people when they put all their freaking hard work into this, and you're making all the money and the glory, and none of us ain't making shit? Yeah, it's it's more about yeah, it's more about respect and being. Fair. It's about mm-hmm. respect, man. You have no respect for your friends, for your family. You don't give a shit about anybody but yourself. That's the you know, and, and maybe that's not even true. Maybe it's it's not true, but that's how it comes off. Yeah, and that's what you're expressing to other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you're not. How do you think people feel? You're not thinking Don't, about other. You're not thinking about others and how it you know yeah. affects them. You know, nobody. No, it's the thing is, is nobody's jealous. Nobody's nothing. It's when people make money. One person makes money off the back of everybody else. And on top of you're putting videos out there, we go. I did that. Yeah. Uh, I came up with that, and it's like, no, you didn't. The, these guys worked hard to put that together. Wor- worked hard uh, to put that together. You didn't yeah, actually, come up with that. <laughs> um, all right, so let's get back to the, sh- the shirts thing, dude. Because this, sh- this is the shirts. Serious. So we get together, and we decide let's, you know, let's let's make t-shirts. You know, so we all put money together, and I'm gonna throw out the figure. It was about nine hundred dollars. Okay, so I had no idea. $300 per person. We put the money together. Then we start figuring out. We go to these conventions. We do this, this, and that. The t-shirts aren't selling. So whatever. We're going to take... I'm going to cut my losses. I don't give a shit. Right? He comes up to us. We're talking about it. He's saying, we're not making any money. We sold only a few t-shirts. Because when you, when you thought about it, once you sold the t-shirts, you were going to make a decent amount of profit. So mm-hmm. we, we're not making any money. So we're just going to have to cut our losses. Whatever. At that point, I, I accept that. Mm-hmm. Now... He leaves here. He leaves Connecticut and he moves to Seattle. He gets to Seattle. He starts doing this Project 7 reboot thing that he's doing, making videos, doing all this stuff. Then I start finding out that he's reselling (laughs) T-shirts or and or he's giving them out. It was for his Patreon. For Patreon. As far as I understand, I could be wrong here. So if I'm wrong, please correct me. Yeah. Anyone out there. But for his Patreon, Patreon. It's uh, you give a certain amount of money, I think it maybe it's forty or fifty bucks, then you will get the one of the shirts. Yep. Um, but the problem is he doesn't actually own the shirts completely. Yeah, he, he doesn't own the shirts completely, so he's giving them out now. How do I don't know if he finished giving them out, 
or if he managed to sell all of them or if he sold them or whatever the case may be. But when I start hearing about stuff like that or I see videos of him posting that stuff, naturally, what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to get irritated beyond belief. Yeah. Now, yes, I don't want to go – I'm not going to go into it because now if I, if I go into what I'm going to go into, it's going to derail everything. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So go, go the, ahead. Let's go with the shirts. So, okay. Listen. So he's taking shirts that – your face is on the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> he has to physically look at your face as he packages the shirt and then mail it as, as he goes to mail it and never for a second thinks, wait a minute, this person paid for a percentage of the shirt. Yep. And on top of that, the logos, the, the sh actual shirts are made by Andre. He's not getting anything. Nope. Um, at one point, the shirts were in OJ's house. And OJ, and OJ was the one that was packing it and sending it to the people. There was a point where that that maybe we only maybe sold one, maybe one or two. So I don't want to go nuts with that. But yeah, at one point OJ did was actually uh, he was actually you know he had them physically. He had them in his basement for months, and I think at one point Phil just said throw them out, and we didn't we didn't do it. Um, I was like, no, I don't throw them out. Maybe you could do give them away. I was like, give them away like as you know as a prize or something someday, you know. So when he moved, he asked for them back. And I was like, all right. You know, so I got them from John, picked them up, brought them to his house. I didn't really think about it. Um, and then, yeah, here you go. So now he's actually using them uh, as an incentive to, to give him money or whatever the hell it is. you know. And I'm sure his response will be something like, I don't, I don't remember that you paid or... Uh, I don't know. Are you never? Maybe he'll say you never brought it up to me that you. But you shouldn't have to. You know what I mean? Yeah, you shouldn't have to. Now you should, really shouldn't have to call him and go, Phil, give me the money from my percentage of the shirt. Yeah. Now, the way the way that I look at it for, for now with this, it's a wash, and this is why it's a wash. Actually, it's not really a wash when I look at it like this because of what he had told me. And this is goes back to what I was just what we were talking about before about him detracting statements, right? So, let's re let's rewind before Project 7. So, what do we do? We start playing ST, right? We start buying the cabs. So, you and I and just just to throw this information out there, the way this thing started was John and I decided to buy a cab, right? The cab shows up. In the middle of this, right? He he comes Phil shows up and he's like yeah, I got a – oh, no, we're at his house and we're looking at some of his stuff and, and I found a super turbo board. He has a blue one. So we're like, oh, you know, I didn't know you had a super turbo board and this and that. And he goes, yeah, I don't even know if this thing works anymore. So we plug it in. We go to the house. We bring it over to the house. We plug it in. It's dead, mm -hmm. right? So super tur So CPS2 has a battery. The battery dies. The board dies. So he goes to me. He's like, man, I, don't, I can't really do anything with it. You can keep it. If you can fix it, just keep it, right? So what do I do? I got a friend of mine that lives in Manchester, right? He goes, I call him up. I met him online, a bill. And Bill goes, yeah, just come by. I'll, I'll revive the board, right? So I throw him like, four, like, I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks, right? He goes, revives the boards for me, re rewrites the EPROMs, get, gets rid of the battery. Board works fine, right? Mm -hmm. So one day he comes up and we're just, we start playing ST. I said, oh, I, I managed to get that board up and running. All right, so when are you going to give it back to me? You just told me you're going to give me the fucking board. What do you mean give it back to you? What are you out of your mind? I just paid forty dollars to revive this and you think I'm gonna give it back to you? Okay. Mm -hmm. So and then this is when this and so and then right after what happens, the t shirt thing happens. Yeah. So you know what I say? Fuck it, I ain't giving you shit back. So I'm keeping a board, right? For the t shirt for the three hundred dollars that you owe me in fucking t shirts. Huh. There you go. Right. And that's the thing. Like, you shouldn't have to go to your friend consistently and 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 bring up like, why did you say this? Please give me the money, owe me. This isn't fair. You know, yeah. like, it puts you in a terrible position to have to keep keep doing that, and uh, it's tough. But then it gets to a point where you just get irritated because the guy don't give a shit about you or anyone else. That's what's irritating the most, man. So again, since I'm addressing things that have been said publicly, and. Uh, Giving you my side. Uh, other, some other things that happened over the years, man. I'll get into this quickly. Some things started going down, man. More of him, again, like I said earlier, exaggerating things, putting words in my mouth, whatnot. 
So there's a situation that goes down where it, it involves, of all things, Howard, Mario Party. Oh, God. <laughs> Involving Mario Party. So people were going out there and saying, you know, because we were doing a lot of co-ops, they're like, we, we want to see you play Mario Party with John. We want John and Phil to play Mario Party. Please p- play it. Phil decides he wants to play it with his girlfriend, which is perfectly fine. I, I really don't care. It's perfectly cool. And just to put it out there, I have no problem with his girlfriend. I've met her uh, a couple times. She was very nice to me. I got nothing bad to say. She's cool people to me. Okay? Whatever. So, he, uh, he wants to play with his girlfriend. He makes a video where he says that John doesn't want to play Mario Party. John likes gritty, mature-type games. He doesn't want to play that. I'm going to play it with my girlfriend. It's flat-out lie. (laughs) I was up for playing whatever he wanted to play, especially if people wanted us to play it. And, you know, to prove my statements correct um, and to support them, look at the stuff that we did play. So much crazy stuff, all the Kinect games. Kung Fu Riders or whatever else, man. Whatever he wanted to do, whatever the people wanted us to do, I would certainly do it. Oh yeah, I, I could take, I, I could do a testament to that because you and I played some really shitty games, man. <laughs> and it's hard to dispute that. So I yeah. draw the line of Mario Party, but yeah, everything else you, is fine. Yeah. Um. So what happens is he says, "Oh, John doesn't want to play that," you know. And this is something people are asking for. So what happens? The common theme: people get pissed at me, <laughs> and I start getting mad while I'm going about my business during the day. I start getting messages, and people are, are pissy. Oh, it's not mature enough for you, you piece, big nose piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not exactly that, but along those lines, man. Oh, man. And again, I bring this up to his attention, because he wants to talk about how you know, you're know you supposed to say things that you feel if you're a man and whatnot. So as I've, I've already given you several examples, here's another one. And I, apo- and I, uh, I tell him what's up. He apologizes, just like the several uh, times before that. And it starts to click, you know, if someone just keeps saying sorry when they do something, uh, they're not really apologizing, right? If you just, if you, apologizing isn't just words, it's I will not do this thing again because I feel bad about it. Um, if you keep doing the thing, you're not, it's not actually an apology. <laughs> do you, yeah. What do you think about that? No, I agree with you uh, 100%. And it just, it, it seems as if it's like uh, a common theme where... He wants to do something and or uh, somebody keeps like I, I, I was telling you, man, he falls right victim to it all the time. Somebody mm. keeps prodding him through social media or whatever for X, Y and Z. And he falls right into the trap. Yeah. And it happens all every single time. He could have just been up front and said, well, I want to play Mario yeah. Party with my girlfriend. And that's it. But he End wants but he wants to look. I have to make myself to look, look good. good. Yeah. I'll blame it on John. Make, I'm gonna blame it on John. That big nose piece of shit. <laughs> He did not say that. I'm not saying that. I'm just joking no. there. But uh, yeah, that's exactly what it is, you know. Yeah. Oh, here's my here's my scapegoat that I could get out of the situation. Because if I if if I play with her, people are gonna thumb down the video or something, or be mad that John's not there. So he didn't want to play it, right? Yeah. Uh, let's get into some stuff here. Basically, from when he moved. In the Thanksgiving video that he put out, his timeline is completely fucked. He talks about how we had plans in the fall. He was going to move. He moved in June. And John and I had plans in the fall. We were to start doing stuff. Now, on this same channel that he's saying these things on, there's videos from that time period where he's talking about doing stuff in that summer. <laughs> so his timeline is screwed, man. It's not true. There's no, there was no plan to wait till the fall or anything like that. Basically, what he said was after he moves in a couple weeks, we'll we'll start doing things. So he moves in June. Things are fine. I actually go there and uh, and help to move some stuff out. Mm -hmm. Um, And, okay, let's get into this. So, no, I'm not upset that he moved, okay, and I'm I'm angry or jealous or something, or I I got left behind or something like that. Uh, If someone's moving... By the way, I've said this to him. I've said this publicly on the show. Before he moved, he was on the show with me. 
And if someone is moving or making a change in their life because it, they feel it will improve their life, I support that 100%. <laughs> Just like I've always supported him 100%. You know? Or anyone, man. How if you tell me you're moving to Iceland tomorrow because it's going to give you a better life? I'm going to be over there helping you pack, dude. Cool. <laughs> you know, how could you feel otherwise? And that's that's my take on that, man. Have you had yeah. friends that have you had friends that moved away? Did you, yeah, do, you hate, do you hate them for doing that? No, still talk to them and and everything else. And you know, I'm going back. You know, I wanted to touch a little bit on that whole moving thing. You know, I I was a little upset. I, I was very upset at okay. the fact that that he 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 sent me a text message like last minute asking me to do like a co op with him and. Basically, actually, let me let me retract on that. Basically, I think what ended up happening was I got caught. Like he sent me a text message, I agreed to it, and I think I got caught in like a jam yeah. with something. Uh-huh. And I told him, I'm like, dude, I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it. You know, I got some stuff going on, and this and that. And basically, he gives he makes me feel like shit. Mm-hmm. Because he writes back, he goes, "Well, if you don't show up, it just basically solidifies the fact that we're not friends." Wow! And uh, dude, he made me feel show. like shit. Like seriously, like shit. Yeah. So what I said was, I, I you know, I was, I was something I had to do with Jasmine. And I told Jasmine, I go, "Listen, I'm just gonna go. You know, I'm gonna end up going to this thing. The, the guy's leaving, and uh, you know, whatever." So we go. You know, we do our playthrough or whatever, right? So he goes ahead. After after the fact, never sends me a text message. Doesn't call me. Doesn't ask me how I'm doing. I from, when he mo- feel- from when he moves. From when he moves. So from that from that point, I sent him a couple of text messages here and there. And uh, I'm gonna go into something, John, because uh-huh. this this basically goes in line into what what we were talking about. Yep. So I sent him text messages, some random ones. You know, Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving. Doesn't reply back. So I thought that he changed his number. Okay, so he moves in June. Yeah. You never hear you never hear from him again, basically. So I never hear from him again. So after gotta, after him saying to you, if you don't come here, then you're solidifying that we're not friends and we're not friends, right? But then he moves so, and he does there's no there's no communication at all. So December 29th rolls around last year. Yeah, twenty fourteen. And I get in twenty fourteen and I get a message. From Chris and a few other people that Scott, I too. that Scott passed away. Yeah, I start getting messages uh, from Chris, and you called me as well. Yeah. So you should set it up because it's it has to do with the Street Fighter community. It has to do with the Street Fighter community. Which so, is a group of people, like, and we don't talk every day to everybody. Yeah. But it's a group of people that uh, is kind of like a brotherhood, if you will. It might sound yeah. silly, but that's what it is to us. It's a brotherhood of people. I spent a lot of time together uh, playing games and and traveling and whatnot. Um, and when something like this happens, everyone contacts each other and we and we talk about it. To, and we talk about it. So one of the brothers has fallen. Yeah. So basically, Scott and some what some what people fail to realize is Scott is Scott is a very old school player. Old school player in a sense. The guy was playing since like World Warrior. Mm-hmm. And he's a he's the true fucking road warrior, the true OG, true OG to the point that just to throw this out there, if you guys, if if anybody that's on this video ever goes and looks this up, the video of Daigo going from th- the first time Daigo ever showed up in the U.S. and this was for a an Alpha Three tournament in the nineties, Alpha Three or Alpha, I think it was Alpha Three. Mm-hmm. And he flies from Japan, and the, the Japanese media are following him around. And this is when he was going to play in this tournament, and he fought. His his opponent was Alex Valle, when Alex Valle was in his, like, teens. Okay. In the video, if you look in the video, fucking Scott's there. Now, Scott fucking went from Connecticut to fucking California to play Alpha 3. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a fucking OG. Yeah. He doesn't play anymore. But you got to give the guy respect for uh-huh. the accomplishments that he ma- he made in the Street Fighter community for 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 the area that we live in. Okay, you know, so the guy passes away, right? So what do I do? I send him a message, and you're the only one, by the way, because I wasn't going to contact Phil because I wasn't uh, talking to him at this point. Yeah. Nobody else wanted to talk to him. But Howard here, who hasn't heard from Phil 
uh, in, in at that point, many months since he moved, you decide I'll be the one to tell Phil. Yeah, so I send him a message, and I go, I didn't say anything high or anything like that. The only thing, because the last time I did that, he didn't reply back to me. I said, hey, Scott passed away. That's all I wrote. Mm-hmm. Doesn't reply back to me. Then, this is what fucking burns me, okay? Yeah. This shit fucking burns the fuck out of me. What does the guy do? A week or two later, makes a video about Scott passing away. Dude, don't fucking publicize somebody's death. Are you fucking serious? You don't and, do that, man. And the bigger issue is, like, he never said anything back to you. <laughs> Doesn't say anything back to me, but, dude, but don't me, but publicize. Go, oh, thanks for the information. I'll, I'll put this and in the video, but I'm not, not going to say nothing to you. Not only that. What does he do? He brings up T, right? Now, T at the time was, like, one of the greatest Street Fighter players in, in, in our area. If he, cont- if he was alive, he probably would have been one of the top players in the country, Okay. And he starts fucking talking about this guy, right? So what does that ha- what does that do? Naturally, in our circle of friends, everybody is fucking fuming because there was no need to bring up T. There was no need to bring up Scott. There's no need to bring up people's deaths and publicize it and make money off of it. There's no need for that, man. And he did. You have no respect. For people that are alive, that for for fucking people that are dead, you don't give a shit about anybody but yourself. So there you go. Yeah. This uh, is what I I dude. If one of my friends died, I wouldn't be making a video about it. I wouldn't be publicizing their death. Yeah, it's terrible, man. Terrible. Yeah, it's um, it's dirty business, man. It's dirty. <laughs> it's dirty. After that, after that, I st- I don't fucking talk. That was it for you. It was it, that was it for me, man. Yeah. That was it for me. Okay. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, <laughs> geez. I'm well, sorry for being so angry about okay. it, but this burns me, man, because it's it's things like this that we should have we should even be avoiding. Yeah. Hmm. And like and his his whole thing will be to retort to you. His response. Will be that? Oh, you should have told me that you're. Yeah, you feel yeah, it, but you, you did. It, it's it's like it's again it's back to the apology thing. It's you could tell someone so many times, right? And they apologize, but they keep doing the same behavior over and over. At a certain point, you realize this is who they are. They're not going to. They don't. They're not really apologizing. They're not really going to change. No, <laughs> this is not. how it is, and you have to make the decision. Like, do I want this in my life or not? You know. Which affects, which is affecting you in in a negative way. Yeah, it's a, it affected all of us in a negative way. And I'm at a point in my life, I'll be completely honest with you, where I'm getting older, yeah. and I'm starting to realize things more and more. And and one of the things that I cherish in my life now are the people that are around me, man. Absolutely. I mean, what else is that? That is what I cherish. That's all that, that's all that I matters, don't care. Man. I don't care about games. I don't care about. You know about what I have. That doesn't. If you had millions me. of dollars right now, but you had no one around you, you had no family or friends, but you had all the money. What is that a good life? No, it's not. I don't know. It's not. Yeah. He moves away, which, like you said, at this point, you know, it's your decision. We support you. You know, absolutely. Hope you hope you do well in your in your endeavors. I hope everyone does well. But what ha- what happens? He leaves. And he doesn't contact us. And the only reason he and, – and I hate to say this. It feels like the only way, reason he contacted you, John. I get, I get contacted. So be, no, I'm not going to say you, you were not yeah, contacted. But why does he contact you? It's not because he wants to see how you're doing. Mm. It's to do playthroughs so he can make money. Yeah. We'll get into this. Let me, so let me speak on this a little bit. So going back to his Thanksgiving video, he, uh, he, he says there's a lot of rumors about why we're not doing stuff. And uh, he goes, it's definitely not about the money. And it's not about me revealing something personal. It's definitely not that. But it could possibly be that I just moved and they, they're resentful about that. Yeah. So it could it be that one, I guess, because that doesn't yeah. make him look bad in any way. You know? Well, that's funny. So anyway, he moves. What he told me is in a couple of weeks, he's gonna, when he's settled, he's going to contact me and we start doing stuff. So a couple of weeks go by. He starts contacting me about things. Um, and quite frankly, he's being uh, pushy about about it a little bit. I want, I need to, you know, let's do it. When do you want to do it? This weekend? What time this weekend? Is like, is get really 
kind of hammering out a date, kind of pressuring. And I think at one week we even had a date to uh, to record something. But uh, I canceled on him um, because I was going through a very difficult period at this point. <laughs> and I, want, I had every intention and desire to uh, do stuff with him at this point. Um, I had basically destroyed myself, Howard, as you know. We, I talked to you about it. Um, and that's not me complaining because being a man, if I'm talking about being a man, I feel like being a man is you make choices and then you deal with the consequences, right? Yeah. You don't run to complain online or cry about what the world, the world owes you all these things. You deal with what you got to deal with, man. So I basically yep. had a lot, I basically had a lot, a lot happening. I had, I had really run myself into the ground, uh, sacrificing a lot of things, uh, part, you know, doing his content too. <laughs> I was working on the episode, uh, Strong's Man Hole Punch episode nine. Uh, there's a lot of work. I was doing, doing stuff with Phil as well. And like I said, my job is I'm an independent contractor. I work in real estate. Uh, you have to like go out on your own and do things to find work. Like you don't just get, you don't just show up for eight hours and, and you get the, the, a check. You know, it's not how it works. Yeah. I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing a lot of real life things because I was sacrificing to make, to make something I believed in and had desired to do. That was my own choice. Okay. I'm not complaining about it, but I was in a bad spot. I had to, it was winding down. I had to start figuring out real life things. So I basically told him, listen, when I, when I, uh, I need to finish this episode. It's almost done. Okay. I need to figure some things out. When I'm done, I'll contact you and we can do things. Okay. I actually didn't do my own show. The, you know, the show, I didn't do it for all of July because I was, doing precisely that. I was trying to figure things out. And I didn't do much of anything else. I was working on my stuff, man. Getting things done. So I'm finally done with the episode in August. August 13th, it comes out, which is a Wednesday. And I'm pretty burnt. I, say, I, I immediately decide I'm going to go on a vacation for a couple days. So I go to Twitter and I say, you know, thanks everyone for watching the episode. I'm going into the woods for a while. I'll be, I'll be back soon. I went to Bear Mountain, Howard. Have you ever been? Yes, I have. You have? Yes, I have. So I went to Bear Mountain. I camped out in the woods. <laughs> I unplugged everything. There's no phones, nothing. Okay? Uh, kind of like detox, man, staring at a computer screen for, at that point, a long time. Uh -huh. I never knew about this. I did this again this year. I do this every year now. <laughs> okay. Um, so I didn't put a message. I didn't contact him and say, oh, the, you know, the episode's up because... Like I said, there was an agreement that we talked about where I said, when I'm ready to do stuff, I will let you know. It should be soon. But the episode comes out. I put on Twitter. I'm going away. He notices while I'm gone. He notices the episode comes out. So while I'm away, he starts throwing me messages again. I'm not around to respond to them. So that weekend, he makes a video, one of his videos that he puts out. He says, I've been trying to reach John, but he, he won't respond to me. <laughs> okay. I come back from my trip. I got messages from him. I got messages from other people saying, why the fuck won't you talk to Phil? Phil's upset. <laughs> and uh, I've kind of pissed about that, Howard. <laughs> yeah, you should be. <laughs> so I'm kind of pissed about this. I don't contact him. I basically say, look, I'm going I'm to keep holding him to what I said weeks ago, which is when I'm ready, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do stuff. I'm gonna, I, will, I will contact him. Um the following week, I get more messages. Uh, they mostly are like, how are you doing? And then as soon as you say, good, then it immediately goes right into the videos. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It's like, a, it's like a setup and then videos. Videos, are we going to make the videos? Let's do some videos. I need to tell people when we're making the videos. Let's do some videos. I don't respond to any of these messages because like I said, I'm in kind of a bad spot. The episode had come out. Now I'm kind of like, all this time is kind of freed up. So I'm piecing my life back together, putting things back together. And I got things going on that actually matter beyond making videos with him. Okay. So I eventually get a, video, a message from him in the middle of the night, Howard. And I wake, it wakes me up because I'm sleeping and I'm pissed off because I have to work the next morning. So I believe I respond. I woke up, I'm pissed off. 
go back to sleep. I remember waking up the next morning and very quickly responding to this in a very nondescript um, text response, which was basically, you know, please count me out for a while. I'm looking to move. I need to, I'm, I'm trying to get money together to move. YouTube isn't going to help with that, which is in reference to doing stuff with him. Okay, because my stuff that I was doing isn't monetized and I'm not looking to, you know, I wasn't looking to make money with that. It was my creative outlet. And I said, I'm around most nights. Please call me. Okay? So, Howard, I'm thinking the next day, Phil will call, right? Yeah. Because I basically expressed I'm, I'm having a tough time. And I said, please call me. So, I'm thinking the next day is I'll get a call and we'll talk about things. What I would have told them was, Hey man, maybe I need maybe uh, two or three months to get my stuff together, to get you know healthier and uh, actually go to work and undo some damage, which is again I did by choice, I'm not complaining. Yeah. <laughs> but instead, what happens, Howard, is I'm going about my business the next day. I get a text from the air raid lord, and uh, he says, uh, "Sorry to hear uh, about what happened." And I go, what do you, what do you mean? He goes, I'm sorry to hear that you're leaving YouTube. I start getting other tweets from, from various people with similar sentiments. Wow. So I, so I go, what the hell's going on here? So I go, go right to his channel, and I see that Phil did not actually call me. He instead made a video, a monetized video, by the way, where he publicly reads the text out loud <laughs> for whatever reason. He goes on to give me a bunch of compliments and then kind of buries me after that, which is a, a weird mixture that he likes to do sometimes. It's like it's like it's like it's okay if I speak negatively because I complimented you first, so it kind of it's okay, right? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. He does the same thing where he goes, "I'm going to be honest with everyone," you know that that usual spiel. <sighs> he talks about how John John's giving up on YouTube. He doesn't want to do stuff on he doesn't want to do stuff on YouTube anymore. Um, he kind of applies, uh, like, I'm upset about views. I'm not getting enough credit or views or money. And, um, you know, very far from my feelings on things. That's awesome. I don't think I ever... It's very hard to make the argument that I tried to make a living on YouTube or I tried to make money on YouTube. Okay? The stuff I put out is not going to <laughs> reach a lot of people. It's not really possible. You know? <laughs> It's a two-hour two hour podcast, which is weird. It's a web series that's weird. It's, it's very different than taking a video game that millions of people know about. It's advertised and doing a playthrough. You know, people could find you in a search. And, like, for my stuff, I know what the ceiling is. Like, the first, the first shot I was going to hope episode, however, is, like, 20,000 views. So yeah. That's my ceiling. It's not 200,000, 2 million, 20,000. I then spent the next three years making more of those, knowing what that ceiling is. It's not, it's never a uh, goal to get fame or uh, or money. It's like this is what I like to do. This is what I want to make. You know, the show we've done, you know, almost two hundred episodes. We know what the ceiling is. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I get all these I get all these messages from people saying, you know, I, I always liked your content. Sorry to hear you're leaving. You know. Wow. In the same video, he talks about how he's the exception. You know, he's the, I'm the one in the million uh, that could that can do this, that can make it. Well, congratulations, man. You know, again, I don't. We don't make the same type of content. And uh, he refers to himself as the realest, realest motherfucker on the internet when he's spewing you know, misinformation when he could have just called. And by the way, Howie. Yep. He has never actually called me to this day, which is. 15 months later, well, maybe 13 months, he's never actually called. Yeah. And in this video, he said, I'm going to call him. He's never actually called me. Yeah. Now, you, now, now, do you, do you want, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just, why don't we roll, why don't you roll into the, the next, the next bit? All right. Hold on. Hold on. So, yeah. I feel like as a friend, you would call and you, and you say, you know, what's going on? Is there something I could do to help you out? Which is what, uh, which is what you did. <laughs> we would talk, right? Yeah. And you would check I in call, once in a while. And I call John. I call John maybe once a week just to see how he's doing. And I would tell you, like, yeah, this is what's going on. And, you know, yeah. 
It's not like that's not that you could fix the situation. I'm not looking for someone to be like, I'm gonna fix your problems. It's, um, you know, talking it out, right? Lend, su- uh, let, uh, let you know I support you, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um. So that's that, and uh, and uh, I want to talk about this. He'll often say, "I'm the realist. I'm the most, you know, here's honestly this. Here's the truth of the matter." When people do that, they're usually doing it for a reason. It's usually because they're not telling the truth. (laughs) If every time you spoke and you go, you know, here's the honest truth of it. Let me be, let me be honest with you for a second. I'm the most honest. I'm the realist. Add some warning sign. Yeah. Big one. Because why are you, why you feel the need to say that? Yeah. On his Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving video, he talks about, I have no idea what I did wrong. I I, so I didn't do anything wrong. If you go to that video from August where he's uh, reading my text, there's random people in the comments, man, and, it's, and on Twitter and whatnot, that don't know Phil personally, don't know me f- personally, well before there's a problem, that, that there's an obvious problem between us publicly. There's people that are saying, maybe you shouldn't have, maybe you shouldn't read someone's text out loud like that. Yeah. So there's random people that will watch and immediately immediately go, why are you reading someone's text out loud? Obviously, it's a, a private message. Why are you doing that? But here we are all these months later, and he still has no idea. But r- random people can, can figure it out uh, immediately a- after watching the video. Yep. <sighs> no. So that was pretty much it. That kind of broke the back right there, man. Because again, you had to pull the stuff in the past, which many times saying things publicly that's that's uh, saying things publicly about me that's not true, and then and then saying please don't do that. And here we go, like the biggest infraction of all, in my opinion. It's a big thing for me, man. Trust, you know, because how do you how do you really be friends with someone if you can't trust them? How do you tell them things? Part of part of a friendship is kind of like the intimacy of it. You know what I mean? Yep. You can share things about. Your feelings or family or whatever the hell. That's kind of, it's gone. It's gone right there, man. So I don't respond to it. I don't say anything publicly. My reaction is basically like, all right, he said he's going to call me. In that video, he actually says he's going to call me. Let's see if he calls. So in a, in the interim, I'm going to roll into this one. In the Go interim, on, yeah. uh, in the middle of this, he starts sending text messages. First, he starts with John, starts sending John these text messages, like in the middle of the night. So now, when you do the math, right, John starts getting text messages at 5, five 6 o'clock in the morning. That means it's like 2 o'clock in the morning there. Uh. So now, when you start reading them, you start looking at it, and it doesn't make any sense why he's even texting. And And it's not even coherent. So you start wondering if the guy was... Like, if he's been drinking and texting. Yeah, it's weird. It's really weird. So, basically, I call John up, and John, you know, John goes, yeah, he's texting me. It's really weird, and he keeps texting me, and I'm not responding back, and, you know. And, it, and like, when he texts, like, he's sending these messages, like, he does feel sorry on one end, but at the but but and then he says something that like later that contradicts it completely. Mm. So you he just kept, get to the point where like this is not a good it, this is not good to have in my life. Yeah, it's and not it's good sad to because have, yeah, you, it doesn't you, mean that, it doesn't mean you hate the person. It doesn't mean that you wish them ill. It's like you hope they could fix whatever they got going on. Yeah. But they're just doing too much damage to you and them and themselves, you know. Yeah, and then you look at it and you're like, you like. know, there's no consistency to what. To, there's no rhyme or reason, no consistency to what he does. So and then John goes like, just get ready because you're probably going to get a text message. So a few weeks ago, what does he do? He texts me. Yeah. And he's and it's weird because he starts off with like, I, uh, hey, so I, heard, I, I heard you hate me now. Or something. Yeah. Like based goes, on what? Hey, yeah. I haven't talked to you in a while. I hear you and John both hate me now. Yeah, no one. Well. Ever, I haven't talked to this guy in like in like. Is there someone, the same, is there someone in, telling him the wrong yeah, things? I don't know. I have, maybe, I maybe have, there is. I haven't talked to this guy since he left. 
The yeah. day that he left, that was the last time he, I talked to him. Yeah, there's a rewinding a bit. So after he, he does the video with the, t- the text message and all that, yeah, um, he did a pre-stream like the following weekend where uh, he says like stuff with John had kind of become stale anyway. It was basically an attempt to be like the, the entire thing was basically like to write me out, you know, for no reason because like if you just called, I would have told him, "Hey man, give me give me like a month or two." Um, but it was an attempt to kind of write like we don't need John anymore. He's he's a fucking he's a fucking loser. He's got all problems, and you know we don't need him. We're gonna keep going with watch my stuff. Um, got very defensive, like almost like I was doing something wrong to him when I really wasn't. Yeah, uh, I did not wrong wrong him by by not being able to do his content. Um, there's a video, man, that somebody that somebody uh, sent to me, okay, which was taken from one of his streams, dude. So. He basically was talking about me uh, around this time period. I mean, it was like August or September. And he's going off about how John uh, lives with his parents. John lives in the middle of nowhere. He's got all these problems. And as usual, yeah, it was like, the, like what I was saying. Like, we don't need that fucking loser around here, you know. He didn't specifically say the loser part, but he did say the, the other stuff. But here's the thing. He doesn't, uh, <laughs> he doesn't know anything about uh, my house who I live with. Um, he has never been to my home. He's never uh, expressed interest in, in doing that. He doesn't really know who's in my life or anything about the situation. And you guys saying things like that on a public stream. Yeah. Someone that's supposed to be your friend. Mm-hmm. Um, so I contact him after this, immediately after I sent him a text message because he wants to say that oh, no one ever expressed any problems or... Um, I don't, I don't ever heard of any problems of John having with me. So I sent him a text. I said, I caught wind that you're uh, saying very p- private things. By the way, you know, not true things, lies about me. Uh, in one of your streams, I expect that you will not be posting that to YouTube. I hope that you will not be uploading that to YouTube. So he did not, he didn't respond and I, I do not believe that um, he did. I don't think he did actually post it. You know, it was one of those, like, pre-stream things. But again, it's like, what is, what is going on here, man? Yeah. <laughs> the next time I hear from uh, from um, yeah, he asks, uh, would you like to be on Hate Live? What you're telling him I can't do. He gets kind of frustrated about it. And I kind of listen to him. I'm doing my own show this week. Like, I can't, I'm not available to do that. You know, it's, it's basically like every interaction has to eventually do with videos and stuff, man. He talked about the Thanksgiving video. He talks about, like, we were talking about shows and stuff. There'll be a message like, uh, hey, you're watching Gotham. And I'll be like, yeah, it's pretty pretty decent. And then it'll just immediately turn into, uh, yeah, let's, let's record this weekend. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, it's like what what are you thinking, man? You know, many, and, and, and I'll admit, there's many texts he sends which I just don't respond to because how do you trust it, man? Yeah. How do you trust this? Is, is it going to become uh, something that's I got to talk about in a video now? Yeah, so pretty John's much. John's talking to me all the time. And and, and, and that's one and yeah. that's one of the reasons why I was reluctant to why why I didn't reply to that text message because I I looked at it and said, well, if John went through this this nonsense with him. With him going ahead and posting these text messages on, on or reading these things on his vlogs, then what what's it to what's it going to keep him from doing it with me? Or well, if you respond, it becomes like, "Oh, Howard's talking to me. What the fuck, John's?" John yeah. Won't say so why why even b- put myself in that predicament? That's why I didn't even bother texting him, texting him back. I just left it left it like that. Mm. But and then, like I said, he goes writes these text messages, sends text messages to John, then sends me a text message. And then what does he do right after? He goes ahead he, he and he posts a video. Yeah, this was maybe uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And then what does he do? He This week, he goes and, and and posts this video on Thanksgiving. So, yeah, two weeks ago, we got we both got texts like the middle of the, middle of the freaking night. While we're middle of the night. I got this sleep, text message. It was, like five, it was like 4.30 in the – no, it was 5.30 in the morning. So that was yeah. like – I think it was like 3 in the morning over there, 2 in the mm-hmm. morning. Yeah. So – I look at it and I and I talk to John. And I said, you know, I I really think he's drinking. He basically like, these texts. Uh, I'm not gonna go word for word because that's what happened to me. I'm not gonna do that. But he basically expressed that he wants to kind of work things out. Yeah. Um, but 
he really doesn't because you saw what he did uh, on Thanksgiving. So it was basically like an ultimatum kind of thing. Like, if you don't fucking talk to me, respond to me right now, then I'm going to go publicly and, and try to fuck you, you know, publicly. Yeah. So you're not really apologetic if you're doing that. You're not really trying to make things right. And you're really not hurt by the, by the situation. Okay? Like, if, if, if you and I had a problem, Howie, which you never know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, and I felt really bad that you're not, you're not speaking to me. I'm probably not going to make the things worse. No. Like, I, by saying shit like you're, you know, whatever he said, the insults that he said in a, in a public video. Yeah. And it's I, almost I, like he's always got to try to save face. He's always, I'm the winner. I'm the... There's no yeah. winner in this situation, man. And I would try, I would try to address it uh, personally versus doing it the way he does. And and personally, I'll be completely honest with you, John. I really think that he watches too much uh, WWE because it feels <sighs> like. No, I'm not lying, dude. It okay. feels like if it really feels like he tries to make his channel like that, where it's full of drama. It's all drama, all right, yeah. just to try to create controversy so that yeah. he can get more views. Yeah, and we're, uh, we're we're feeding into it right now, and we are we're feeding into so it. So, right like now. I said, he's still he's still finding ways to monetize us after this time. But uh, yeah, um, let's bring up that. So, uh, WWE smart guys, man. People people often ask him like, "Are you doing smart guys?" And he'll just throw me under the bus. Like, uh, it's up to John. It's hundred percent on him if we'll, if we'll do it. Uh, I got some text from him. <laughs> From last summer, where he, he's basically like, "Let me know when you want to do smart guys, so I'll start watching wrestling again." So what that says to me is like, you're not really a, a fan of it. You don't really watch it. You will watch it if you could make a video about it, and you're going to make a video about it because you want to monetize a video. <laughs> yeah. Right? So it's just really weird, you know, like. Like I'll start watching when you when you let me know that uh, we're gonna do the show. Otherwise, I don't fucking I'm not gonna fucking look at it. You know, I don't know. Um, let's go to Thanksgiving last year, man. I'm just trying. We only got maybe a couple things here left just to get out of here. Not ruin the entire day here. Yeah. Um, because life is good, man. If you let life be good, there's a lot of great things you could be doing with yourself. Oh, exactly. <laughs> um. So, yeah, in the Thanksgiving video that he put out this year, he talks about how last year he was not invited on the Black Friday show that we did for uh, 2014. Uh, you know, never mind the fact that OJ wasn't actually there either. Does that mean that, you know, I hate OJ? <laughs> it was actually just you and I, actually. Yep. Um, and he also doesn't bring up the fact that last year on Thanksgiving, he is when he decided to unfollow me on, on Twitter. Um, which again, like you today, you're supposed to be with your family and, and friends and whatnot, and causes me to get a bunch of shitty messages, just like this year. It causes you to get a bunch of shitty messages and, and cause problems, you know, that you didn't drama that you don't need, man, that you're not looking for and don't deserve, really. So there's, there's uh, something out there where people will be like, people are saying, John, unfollow Phil on YouTube. But the fact of the matter is he was never, I never actually, uh, I never actually followed him in the first place, so I didn't unfollow him. I, don't, I also didn't follow OJ and Howard. I didn't follow any of you guys on uh, YouTube, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then, and so I didn't actually follow him and then co consciously unfollow him. Um, that's like very fourth grade uh, nonsense, which he has done. He doesn't follow. I, I still follow him on Twitter, actually, because I'm not going to go through the trouble of unfollowing someone like I'm third grade. Uh, but he has unfollowed all of us in all things. Yeah. Okay. Well, he he like I said he he threw the first stone, so now he's wondering why we don't talk to him. And then you know when you start looking at some of the the underlying issues, you realize why. It's a freaking yeah. circus, man. It's a circus. Um, he's doing the Patreon. We talked about the shirts. Yeah. Says so we're just kind of empty, emptying the, the barrel here, you know. Yeah. Um, a couple months ago. Maybe it was uh, September of uh, maybe September or August of uh, 2015. This year, he uh, he put out a montage of a co-op a co-op co playthrough that we did, and put ads on there. Um, and it's pretty obvious that like I, I don't 
want to do anything with you or be associated with you. And then just let me put out a video that's got John in it so I could put ads on it. Wow. You know? Why, why would you... Why would you... Well, I can see why you would do it, but again, like there's obviously some, some problems with the relationship. Why do you uh, think that's a good idea? Wow. On uh, top of other nonsense, man, he talks about behind my back uh, on his forum or, uh, or elsewhere. And I always, I always catch wind of it, man. People throw him my way. And it gets to a point where uh, it's too much, man. Yeah, and and then you figure if you don't, because then what happens is people, you don't go ahead and address it. And we were trying to avoid addressing this for a long time. Mm. But like I said, he goes and makes a video and then he starts with the shit again with, you know, making a video, trying to, and and he, and like I, like I say it all the time and a lot of other people say it, he's terrible at damage control. Terrible. Yeah. And sometimes when he addresses things, it makes it end, ends up being even worse than what it really was. And, so he, and, and I think like, I think we probably didn't even have to do this. <laughs> yeah. Because when someone says like it's it's a hundred percent on their side, I did nothing yeah. wrong. Like no one no one believes that. No, it, and no and no yeah exactly. Maybe no some people does. do, but most most people are like smart enough to be like, wait a second, that's uh, really. Yeah. <laughs> like these other people just lost their we just lost our minds and became these fucking heinous villains, and uh, you know. Uh, it's usually not how the real world works, man. Yeah, maybe you're maybe you're out to some of that WWE thing. I think you might be out to something with that uh, philosophy. No, and I, yeah, and I, I like I said, he he, you can tell just even from the beginning, you know why? Like even from his name, like the King of Hate, and it's mm-hmm. like he he enjoys that. He lives by that, and it's like mm-hmm. you know I understand if it's like a facade for like YouTube or you know whatever the case may be, but like when you're when you're doing these things. In real life, to people that are close to you, and you start questioning whether or not you know, yeah, you know if it's a facade or if it's the real you. you and know? look, man, at the end of the day, he didn't kill anybody. No, he didn't. Um, he doesn't deserve to be put in prison or something or uh, crucified no. or anything like that. I have no hatred towards him. I wish him the very, very best. I feel like everything we addressed here today is just stuff that's been put out there that uh, needed to get the other side of it. Um, you know, a lot of misinformation. And that stuff, they'll piss you off, man. People say things about you that aren't true enough times. Um, you know, but, you, gotta, you gotta get your story out there. I think I think there's people out there who probably still won't believe or will deny what, things that were said here today. Yeah, but it's, it's, whatever, it's man. Not, it, and it's not going to matter anyways because no matter how you look at it, uh, you know, it, you got to live by that philosophy. Op- opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. And and that's what's going to end up happening. You know, anything that we talk about today, it's going to get misconstrued in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, that's how it goes. You know, um, that's and, why I don't want to get involved. I got other stuff to do, man. Yeah, I and got then, fun things to do. Like life is pretty simple, man. And I, I know you, you kind of, I think you kind of cracked the code. You, know, you go to your job, you do the best you can. You go to your job, and maybe you don't like your job that much, but everything leads to something else. You know what I mean? Like wherever wherever you may work out there. You're learning some something. Um, you may not you may not realize that, but you're getting something out of it. You're getting experience, life experience that you could apply to something else. And, and I think life is kind of like a ladder, and you should keep trying to climb um, to, to greater heights. You know. Um, oh yeah. And, and then when and then when you're off time, you don't spend your time uh, shitting on other people. You don't spend your time uh, oh. being angry about things or feeling like the world owes you stuff. You spend your time doing something you might enjoy with people that you enjoy being around. Yeah. And it's very simple. You don't need millions of dollars, my friends. Uh, you don't need to have all the views or, uh, you know, whatever, whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Last time. And like I said, I, I live by that. The last time I checked, YouTube doesn't sign my checks. So, you know, to me, it doesn't oh, really, would you really want, okay. Would you really want them to, would you want no, that to be your I, I personally wouldn't because I, I, I can't, I can't deal with that. It's yeah. constantly having a, you know, and like I said, I, I'm going to give credit where credit is mm-hmm. due. Mm-hmm. And I'll be completely honest with you. I'm I'm very impressed at how successful he has gotten. Oh, absolutely. He's a very successful person for what he has done, you know, in the past five, six years. And he was a pioneer in the beginning, you know. Absolutely. I'm not going to say that he wasn't, you know. Absolutely. But I think he's stuck in a rut. There's a lot of let's players. And it's hard to compete now so unless you, you do things differently. 
And I think he's in a he's in a really bad spot, and that's why he's trying to reach out to us. But he doesn't know how to reach out. He mm. does it in a negative way, and it really just burns. too much. Uh, too much damage has been done. Too much damage has been done, and it continues being and, it, and the damage continues because he doesn't know how to divert the damage. Yeah, he just he just adds to it. But I, I do I do care about him, and I hope he does uh, does great things. Yeah, I, I, I'm I hope a, he could. I'm, I hope he could. Um, if he is in some sort of, uh, I don't really know, honestly, if he's in a, a tough spot um, emotionally or uh, whatever, income-wise, I hope he can turn around. I think he can. I think he can do it. Yeah. Um, and I'll be, I, I just want to throw this out there, and this is, for, this is for John and myself. This is the last time we're going to address this. I am not going to continue doing this. He, he says one thing, we say another. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. This is the first and the last time I'm going to address this. Well, and that's, that's for you. And, I, I might. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. But you're done. You're done with it. I'm pretty much uh, done because it's – you know what? <laughs> All right. How I, about, oh, here, I'll say this, okay? Yeah. I'll say this. So instead of – to fill, instead of making a, a monetized response video or trying to, you know – Post something on your forum, or maybe I won't see it, or something like that. Um, or trying to try to make profit off of any of this. Do what you said you were going to do back in August 2014. Give me an actual call. Give me the call that you promised that you were going to do. Give give both of us the call. Okay, sure. Yeah. Give the call. I'll be happy to talk to you about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then that's that, man. That's that. And uh, people want to come here and, uh, well, you can come here and do whatever you want, really, because this is a, <laughs> a bootleg yeah. show that we put it together. But if you want to if you want to shit on me and, you and if you, you know, people out there, if you guys want to shit on me and say, like, you, you, your views are shit or whatever you want to say, man, my channel is me having fun with my friends. I don't put ads on my stuff because I don't have to. Um, I don't ask the audience for anything. Um, except to hopefully have a good time and have a great time doing what I do. So please, again, tell me that I'm not successful. <laughs> okay. Tell me I'm not successful. Uh, or you could just, you know, do the usual thing and say you're a big nosed piece of shit, <laughs> but you know, that's true. That part is true. You Juno's bastard. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Let's calm down, buddy. Uh, is that the end of this thing, this atrocity? Yep, that's it. Okay. Do <laughs> you have any plans for the rest of the day? Maybe um, make some rant videos about other people out there. No, I'm going to Bass Pro Shops. Oh, right on, man. So, What are you, are you picking something up? Uh, no, we're just going to go. Ja yeah, maybe. Jasmine, Jasmine uh, wanted to go because I went there the other day, and uh, apparently you can bring your dog in and take a picture with Santa. Good stuff. Diggs, you bring in, you bring lady in. Yeah, I'm bringing lady in. She's gonna take a picture with Santa. I want, to, I want this photo signed by you and the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I want the dog's print on the the photo. Yeah, on a photo. <laughs> oh man! All right, all right, man. I gotta move on from this. Okay. Um, all right. Adios, everybody. Yep.